And the title of the message tonight is Rising to Meet Your Destiny. Rising up to meet your destiny. Hallelujah. You know, tonight the Holy Spirit, as I was, as I was waiting before the Lord, the Holy Spirit told me that you may be facing circumstances in your life right now. Right now. Maybe in the past season, past weeks, month, and right now. And these situations are challenging you. These situations rise up against you that you really don't know. You feel so intimidated. You feel like, oh, this is what can this do to me? Where am I going to go? Where, where is this going to take me? You may also have gone through doubts and, and questioned your destiny at such times. And let me tell you, tonight in the presence of God, God is going to do an amazing thing. He's going to set you free tonight by the power of his spirit. And we are going to learn about a woman in the Bible who rose up to meet her destiny. And her name is Esther. And let me tell you some very important things before we can go further tonight. There are some interesting facts about this woman named Esther. Number one, Esther was a Jewish woman. Number two, she was a virtual non-entity raised up by her cousin. Number three, she did not have any particular promise. So who was she? Number one, she was a Jewish orphan. She was an orphan. She did not have father and mother. It was her cousin who raised her up. Amen? And she did not have any promise. So I want you to turn to the book of Esther and be there. I'm going to pick up some scriptures from there tonight. And we're going to see what the Holy Spirit has for us. Number one. Point number one tonight. God is the opener or he's the one who's the opener of destinies. Amen? Sometimes you may think, I don't know what's kept in store for me. But the God whom you worshipped just a few moments ago, and you said he loves me, recklessly he loves me. And then the Holy Spirit just led me to, to say, you know, the church also needs to respond and reciprocate back. Amen? You know something? Love is complete when it is two-sided. Have you, have you heard, have you met a guy who says who loves a girl and the girl never till he went to the grave ever loved him? Did they get married? No. It has to be two-way. So when we declare and we worship that God's love is so amazing, we need to reciprocate back love to him. Amen? Be vocal that Lord, we love you. Amen? We are not ashamed to declare that we love you. God is the opener of destiny. God is the changer of season. God is the one who changes situations in our life. But there is something that God wants us to do. So point number one, God the opener of destiny. Now the book of Esther contains the account of God opening the destiny to any person who is willing to. To hold on to him. If you hold on to God. You fear God. You revel his presence. And you submit to authority. I challenge you from this pulpit tonight. God will take you to places and levels you have never been. God will give you such tremendous breakthroughs. Amen. Because he is the opener of destinies. It doesn't matter. You may feel like an orphan tonight. Oh, my parents did not give me the best when I needed them the most. They weren't there. Oh, somebody may say, oh, but I studied under a street light. I, but you know something, whatever was your situation, it is God who is, who is all powerful to change seasons in your life and my life. And he's still at work. He's still at work. He did it in Esther's life. He saved a nation to her through her and her cousin Mordecai. And tonight, he's calling us to rise up. Amen. 
He's calling us to rise up. So point number one tonight, God is the opener of destiny. The chapter two of the book of Esther, verse nine, reveals that Esther, can we turn to Esther chapter two and verse nine tonight? Thank you, Lord. And it says, Now the young woman, who is that Esther, pleased him, and she obtained his favor, so he readily gave beauty preparations to her besides her allowance. Then seven choice maid servants were provided for her from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maid servants to the best Place in the house of the women. Hallelujah. What happened? God opens destinies. Who was she? A Jewish orphan. Who took care of her? Mother, father, brother, sister, a cousin. Did she have any promise to? Well, this was the prophetic word. Over. You know, some people just keep gathering prophetic words and do nothing about it. I have a diary full of prophetic words. Yeah, but what are you doing? Are you claiming? Are you standing upon the word? Let me tell you something tonight. Esther did not have any promise. Nothing. Nothing. But what was that in her that opened the door in her life? Esther was dedicated to whatever was taught to her. Number one, Esther feared God. Many people don't these days. They don't care. They feel like it is God's business to do everything. If he is God, he's alive. No, no, no. Esther feared God. Esther knew what it was to submit to authority. She submitted to the authority she was under. She submitted to God. She submitted to the authority under whom she was. And down the road, she even submitted to the king, amen, whom she was about to become queen too. So Esther knew the power of submission. I tell you something tonight. As we make a choice to fear God and to submit to his ways, I tell you the truth tonight that God will open doors, amen. He will open doors for you. He will change your destiny forever, amen. Now, point number two. What was there in Esther that paid off? There has to be something. Like I mentioned, she feared God. She submitted to authority. What was there in her that made it, pay, made it to pay back to her in such a great measure? Point number two. Integrity pays richly. She was a woman of integrity. And I tell you tonight, God is looking for men and women of integrity. He doesn't, God will not use double-minded, unstable, double-natured. He's looking for men and women of integrity. Honest, faithful, true to yourself, true to what you believe. Not one of the face and another one out behind somewhere else. Chapter 2 and verse 17. It says, the king loved Esther. Amen. We're going to read verse 17. And it says, the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Amen. When you fear God, when you submit to authority, God will grant you favor in the sight of authorities. He will grant you favor at your workplace. He will grant you favor in your business. He will grant you favor in all that you do. And what will be the net result of that? You will have the best. Tonight, let me tell you, it is God's heart that you and I always have the best. 
He is a good and loving father. And he wants us to be people of integrity. People who don't keep changing. That's why his son Jesus said, let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Don't fool around with your words. Don't be somebody when you are in a group and somebody totally different. Don't say hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord here and sound so spiritual and go and swear outside. When you're with your friends, just sing along so that I'll be accepted. You know what happens? Doors get closed. But when you walk in integrity, God opens amazing doors. You will surely find favor, not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of man. Hallelujah. So we see the king loved Esther more than all the other women. So let's go back. Esther obeyed the commands of her cousin Mordecai as she was brought up by him, amen, in the 20th verse of chapter 2. In the same chapter, we see verse 20. Now Esther had not revealed her family and her people just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the command of Mordecai and, she, and when she was brought, as when she was brought up by him. Obey the commands of your parents. Children, obey the commands of your parents. It's very important. You know what happens? You may think they sound foolish. They are old-fashioned. There's a big uh, generation gap between. But you know, whatever you think, however, however big that may be like rocket science, it still does not change the word of God. God calls us to obey our father and mother, to obey those who are, are in authority above us, to honor even our parents. Now, what happens when we do that? We tap into God's favor. Or God's favor, rather, is released upon our lives. When everybody says things are miserable, for you it'll just be cool. When everybody is finding things so difficult, you will say, for me, it's just a cakewalk. Why? Because you have made a choice to submit to authority, to obey the command. So what did Esther do? She obeyed her cousin. He said, don't reveal your identity. Stay where you are. And so she obeyed him, not just at that, that place, but she obeyed the command of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him. Parents, teach your children God's word. I tell you from the pulpit tonight, teach them God's word. Don't think it's the business of a, of a junior church teacher or a Sunday school teacher. I'll send them for one hour and they'll know the Bible. They're reading you. They're looking at you. They're following you. You need to teach them God's word and live by that. So that when they grow up, they will, when they grow old or old enough, they will not depart from what you have already invested. And that is why it is vital. Look at the result of Mordecai's investment into Esther's life. She obeyed even as she was brought up by him and she continued to obey what he had instructed her to do. Even in the presence, this is white light. I'm going to, the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart tonight. Even in the midst of recognition, in the midst of success, in the midst of wealth, in the midst of luxury, an environment many might covet. Wow, name, fame, luxury, money, oh, all that is wonderful. But all this has often proven destructive to spiritual commitment. I'm not saying that you, you don't need money, but I'm saying many times if the focus is lost, the spiritual commitment drops down. But we see in the life of Esther, she retained a sense of perspective and integrity. She became rich, oh yes. She became famous, oh yes. Was she beautiful looking? 
No doubt about it. Not a shadow of doubt about it. What she she was famous. She was rich. She was a winner. She was in a high position. She had the man, the number one man, with her. So what was she supposed to do? Behave stupid? That's what many do. As soon as they get something in life, their so-called status changes according to what man sees, according to the lens of man. Their attitude changes. And you know what? Many fail there. God is watching your attitude when you had a small salary and when you have a fat one. God is watching how you started those humble days in big business and now you run an empire. God is watching. God was watching Esther. And this is one of the secrets of Esther's life. Success did not climb to her head. Many times success can, can be so dangerous that somebody does not want to look at everybody. You know, do they know who I am now? Pride comes in, pride sets in. And pride is a killer. Pride is a killer. Humility is a way maker. Humility makes the way. Jesus, the son of the most high God, walked in humility all the days of his life. And his father exalted him and gave him the name that is high above every other name. You know, the name is so powerful. We are here because of that name tonight. Hallelujah. We are called by that name. Amen. So, she stayed true to the ways of the Lord. Church, tonight, stay true to the ways of the Lord. Stay true to him. You know, I tell you, most of us, most of us may have come in here with almost nothing. Am I making sense to somebody tonight? You must have come here with almost nothing. Some of you, as you, as you gathered what was released, you experienced big time losses. But as you still held on to God in humility, in that brokenness, you worshipped him. God who is forever faithful lifted you up. Why am I saying, why is the spirit of the Lord saying this to us tonight? Saying, be on your guard. Don't be proud. Walk in humility. You know, the, the beauty, the most beautiful thing about Esther, the most beautiful thing about Esther is that Esther did not depend on her own beauty. Esther did not depend on her. You know, I made it here because I am beautiful. I made it here because I am the smart guy. I made it here because I am the gold medalist. I made it here because I have ideas like, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Be on your guard. Because you need to rise up. You need to rise up tonight and take a hold of what God has. But we can never take a hold of what God has till we do it the way God wants us to do it. And so we see none of this success, name, fame, beauty, wealth did not go up to her head, but she stayed humble and focused a woman of integrity. Some more interesting things about Esther tonight. Esther, her Hebrew name was Hadassah, which means myrtle. Now this reminds us that this is a well-known evergreen shrub. It's an evergreen shrub, always green through the year. And so her name reflects her courage. Her name reflects her obedience. Her name reflects that she was even willing to face death. That's the meaning of her Hebrew name. But look at her Persian name. This is interesting. A Persian name, Esther, means star. Wow. Wow. Her name means star. Shining. For whom? For Jesus. You know something? We are all called to be stars for Jesus. Because there's a light inside. And that light needs to shine. We need to shine for... Sometimes we, we, we put in so much of effort to shine for our 
organization. We put in so much effort day and night. Sometimes we even neglect the family so that we could be in some position where everybody was, wow, that's after you. We want to do so many things. Praise God, praise God. But what are we called for? We are called to shine for Jesus. We are called not to shine for ourselves, but for Jesus. And we see that Esther, as the meaning of her name, she shone bright, amen, where there was darkness, where there was threatening to her own people, she stood as the light, amen. She was ready to risk her own life. What are you ready? What are we ready to risk for Jesus? We sang this song, Reckless Love. I mean, God, just leave the 99 and just come. Come to reach out to us. I don't know what you are feeling like tonight. But you know, the Holy Spirit says that God, God is reaching to you by his spirit tonight. And he's calling you to rise up. He doesn't want you to be sitting where you are and crying about your situations. He wants you to rise up in obedience. He wants you to rise up in submission. He wants you to rise up in faith so that as he's opened destinies for you, he's making ways for you that you will walk in it because of that. Not only you, many lives will be blessed. There's a brother sitting in our congregation tonight and I'm not going to point towards him, neither take his name. And I was so blessed to know that God has used him in this nation to place 30,000 plus people on jobs. Isn't that wonderful? I'm not telling you his name, not pointing to him. God used him to bless 30,000 plus people find employment. God wants to use each one of you and I. Amen. Do you believe it? Do you believe? He cannot use us if we are stuck somewhere and we make a choice to sit somewhere. I wish my father was a billionaire. I wish I had a I, I had this car. I had a, a, a villa. I, I wish, I wish. Just leave, put that behind. God is asking you to rise in faith. He even told blind Bartimaeus to rise up. He even told the man at the pool with, with, with the, at Bethesda to rise up. Take up your mat. You see something, God, the Holy Spirit is telling us tonight, there's something that we need to do. And the problem is that we are waiting for God to do. And God is saying time and again that we need to do it. We need to rise up. We need to rise up from our situation so that God can lift us up as we walk steadily by faith. Amen? So, Esther, she stood tall and strong and she was willing to even lay down her life. The third point, the key to lasting success. There are three things that I want to share tonight in the keys to lasting success. Number one, Esther's response to Mordecai's call to recognize God's providence in her placement. You know something, wherever God has placed you, there is providence in that. I want to tell you something tonight. I don't know who this is for. When you take up your job, you tell the whole world to pray, but when you quit, you don't ask anybody. It's like, God, get lost. I'm become smart now. I don't need you now. I know what to do. You know, everything that we do, we need to, we need to ask a counsel of God. Everything that we do. You know why? Mordecai reminded Esther of God's providence through her position. Wherever you are placed, don't belittle your own self. At the same time, don't be proud. Don't belittle your own self and say, I'm good for nothing. God can use you 
wherever you are where whatever you do god can use you there is a purpose why god has placed you where he has placed you and when he has placed you don't run away from there tonight you may have faced challenges you may have faced hamans in your life who have conspired who have gone behind your back and buttered the man up but you know something they cannot touch what god has for you why because there's a season in your life as you walk in integrity as you walk in faith the hamans have to be exposed it is god's business to destroy hamans it is our business to walk faithfully you know half of the time people are running after that somebody else they can smell a little maybe he maybe she wasting their time sleepless nights trying to plan and cook up what to do next morning in office it is utter foolishness it only advertises your lack of trust in god there was a challenging and intimidating situation where a whole nation a race was about to be finished off but what happened esther mordecai reminded her instruct a child in the way he or she should go train them so that when they are old they will not depart teach your children when they grow up when they face the storms in life they will still be strong you can still tell them over the phone son you have been raised to the ceo's position who knows for a time like this stand strong my son stand strong my daughter but stand strong in the lord and in the power of his might you know something we don't need one testimony our life needs to be a testimony we don't need one testimony some day in the corner somewhere our life has to be a living sacrifice holy pleasing acceptable to lord and our life should be a living testimony hallelujah hallelujah so wherever you are placed even though you are facing challenges it may look to be nothing is happening god is still at work there is providence where god has placed you in there is providence in the position that god has placed you and you are there with a purpose mordica is telling esther you have reached there with a purpose for a purpose you are where you are tonight with a purpose amen there is a destiny there is a place where god wants you to move to reach for his glory so esther recognized god's providence in her placement she respected the power of prayer and fasting she recognized the reality of the spirit realm she did not just use her authority saying i'll influence the king no pray pray she told sent message to our people to pray and what did she say even i'm going to fast and pray she knew the power of prayer which the church undermines many a times the power of prayer that is why you see the least turn out for prayer they undermine the power of prayer it is for some bunch of people to pray or they think only when certain bunch of people pray god hears you know something we all have been called to pray we all have been called to pray you know she, you see the keys to success she knew that god had placed her with a purpose she knew there is power in prayer number 3 she was willing to lay down her life for others unless unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground it still stays as it is as it is but till unless and until it does not die die to self you know what jesus did not come to be served but to serve and we tell everybody we are his disciple i am a disciple of christ i am a follower of christ i am a worshiper of christ how will i know sir 
by your love for one another yes number 1 number 2 love involves serving she was willing to lay down her life what are you willing to do for christ what are you willing to do for christ ask yourself this question tonight before you can partake of the communion esther is similar to jesus in several ways she lived in submission we learned jesus also lived in submission to his father amen all the days of his life esther identified with her people she fasted for 3 days jesus hebrew chapter 2 and verse 17 tells us that in all things he that is jesus had to be made as his brethren that he might be merciful and faithful i priest as such he both fasted and prayed for his own people so esther submitted jesus submitted esther fasted and prayed jesus fasted and prayed finally esther gave up her right amen to live in order to save the nation amen from certain death jesus gave his life for us so that we will live with him forever as i close tonight let me tell you the key she rose up to meet her destiny i tell you something please stop speaking negative things stop concentrating where you are i am in this situation i am in this it looks hopeless it looks helpless i don't know don't 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 look that look about fix your eyes on jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith who has called you and is faithful he will lift you up even to greater heights he will make ways where there are there are no ways the problem is that you are thinking how god will make the way that's not your business god is able to make the way you may not understand i i may not it's perfectly fine who told you that we need to understand everything logic logic how can god do it time is over god is only asking you by his spirit tonight to rise up rise up in faith rise up in worship rise up in thanksgiving rise up in adoration rise up rise up to give what belongs to god so that he will give you much more than you can ask you know something at uh, this portion on top is very 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 limited if i give you 100 pages to write uh, what do you need i tell you something that that won't even be an ounce a drop in the ocean of what god is able to give you but that does not mean you and i don't need to ask we need to rise up to believe what god is able to give us is much more than what we can ask and god doesn't want us to live there even the prodigal son couldn't do anything as long as he was there it was thinking but the bible says that he rose up he said mm, let me go you know many people need to help their own selves they're waiting for somebody else to help you need to help your own self and god will help you up tonight as you come to the communion table whatever situation you are going through the holy spirit is calling you to rise up to meet your destiny she rose up to meet her destiny will you take the opportunity that the holy spirit is giving you tonight to make a decision you are called you are chosen Amen to do great things in and for the kingdom you are not called for nothing you are called to live a kingdom life and to do things for the kingdom you are called to serve the living god tonight as you would respond god would open doors in your life god would open the, make the impossible possible all that i want to tell you as the spirit of the lord is saying tonight don't allow discouragement and fear to take a hold of you of your life esther faced it because she knew god was with her she was willing to lay down her life what are you willing to lay down tonight for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of the gospel as you rise up in faith god will take you 
levels and places you have never been. 